does not want to live in a place which has clean air and clean water as well? That's what a sustainable living house looks like, right? We have been talking about high AQI levels, rampant construction everywhere. That's the case across cities where people are talking about big buildings getting constructed and more and more real estate coming up. But in that case, it's also important that the real estate that's coming up is green, is sustainable, and builders are making those changes in order to ensure that there is green living across the cities. What changes do the builders have to make? And would it cost consumers more if they go across to a builder and ask for a green building? Let's find that out. What would green buildings really mean from our special guest on the podcast today, Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani, who is the co-founder and MD of Hiranandani Group. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, Saranda. <laughs> you know, I have to ask you because it's on the front pages. It's everywhere in the news. So much construction in our own city, actually. What's happening? What's the idea? And every time there's a topic of real estate construction, it's always polluting. What's the idea that you're seeing with real estate builders right now? <laughs> uh, I guess uh, whenever you do any building, whenever you run your car, whenever you travel, whenever you uh, fly by plane, uh, manufacture anything that you're wearing, including the clothes that you wear, uh, all these cause some sort of uh, effluent and uh, there is a problem relating to the environment and sustainability. India is a poor country and doesn't have any infrastructure. 50% of the people in Mumbai live in, still in, live in Jopar Patis. Uh, we are now struggling to construct 300 kilometers of metro. We had only 190 kilometers of uh, suburban rail up till now. So India is being a poor country and trying to catch up with uh, and become a $5 trillion economy. It means a lot of construction is going to take place, whether it's infrastructure, airports, water supply, uh, the whole lot of all that, schools, hospitals, all these educational institutions, media houses. If you look at all these things, factors, they all cause pollution of some sort of term. So what are we trying to achieve, actually? What we are saying is that we can't stop construction. We can't stop development. Uh, what we want is sustainable development, and which means that we economize on seeing that the carbon fit footprint is minimal. We use as less as possible biofuels, which causes environmental damage, which is huge. And we try to see that there is efficiency in design and execution of all these projects. So we don't stop development, but we actually use the right word which you have used is sustainable. We use energy effective. We even look at the type of uh, activity that we do, which would make a paradigm happen in creation of sustainable. The Prime Minister has also mandated the same. So we are looking at all aspects of uh, production, manufacturing, construction, wastewater management, solid waste management, uh, management of dust, management of pollutants which come from cars and other renders, all these aspects are now being looked into completely. If we can make all this sustainable, which is the target that we have, development and sustainability will go hand in hand. However, unfortunately, we haven't been able to achieve both ends, mm -hmm. wherein that uh, development is not necessarily in a sustainable manner, though that is the direction in which we are doing. So the government, uh, private uh, enterprise, developers, uh, companies and uh, government companies which are doing infrastructure, MMRDA, railways, ports, airports, all these people are now looking into a direction where we can do it. The other most important factor is change from biofuels hmm. to EV. Hmm. And that's a huge step that is taking place. And that is where the uh, you know the the reduction of pollutants will be huge and uh, large mm. because uh, the dust pollution we are able to control mm. whether we uh, we use uh, uh, you know covering the uh, construction sites uh, using water in order to say settle the dust but the pollutants from the cars and the factories and others cannot be taken care of 
by simple method of actually isolating the sites mm. and doing that. So it's a complex mechanism of creation of sustainability, but each plays his very big role, including the developers. So let me come to that specific point now. When, as a developer, you talk about doing sustainable ways of construction and building those homes, what are some of the key things that you keep in mind while construction, smaller things at the construction site or post the entire building is ready for occupancy as well? Um, so now there are more than 50 items. Wow. But, but let me talk about a few of them. Yes. Uh, let's start with wastewater. Mm, 25 years ago, in Hiranandani Gardens, we set up a wastewater treatment plant where we recycle water. Today, we recycle 4 million liters per day. Per day? Per day. And we reuse this for gardening, for flushing, for construction works and other things. So our requirement of water for, let's say, this project has come down by a third. Wow. So if we have to use 1 million liters, we will use only... 0.66 billion. Similarly, we did another 4 million plant in Thane, in Hiradandani estate. Yeah. Now, the whole city of Mumbai Corporation does not recycle 8 million liters of water. Mm. So we use fresh water for golf courses, for our gardens, for other things which are not required to use fresh water. They can use recycled water. Correct. So, and we throw all the half treated uh, sewage into the sea. So, that's the first thing. I mean, that's the biggest pollutant which, let's say, a city like Mumbai can do. And you have heard similarly about uh, cities which are on the banks of rivers, on the banks of lakes, where people are putting the pollutants in the rivers and lakes. So, that's the first part of sustainability because water is an extremely important part. And if you recycle water, Mumbai can get 24 by 7 water for everybody without a drop if we recycled all the water that is actually going out and half treated into the sea. So not even half treated into the sea. So let's, that's one. I'm just giving you one example of that. Let's take the second example of using materials for the purposes of construction, which are effective and are green. Mm. So a lot of materials that we use now are completely in a way which they are recyclable mm. and use materials which have the lower carbon footprint. Mm. That's extremely important. Yeah. And we are all doing that. Whether it's in terms of cement and for other materials, we do it. The third important thing in the construction side is design of buildings. Mm, right. We design the buildings in some, such a way that you require less energy. Mm. So the green buildings that we make are more energy effective. We use more natural sunlight into the buildings so that they are able to get, le you need less uh, um, you know, lighting and other things which we are doing, especially in the office environment, in the residential environment. All this becomes extremely important. And the design and other aspects of the building, uh, we do take care of. Once we have done that, we get a rating for our buildings. Mm. So our buildings are rated in terms of green buildings. Okay. That's how the rating takes place in terms of materials that which you were mentioning in your introduction to this uh, podcast. So all in all, there are 50 items like this which we can do. So for example, the roofs. Mm. The roofs can be used for solar uh, energy. The roofs can be kept for green gardens. They can use reflective materials so that the heat load of the buildings can be done in terms of uh, what you have. So all these aspects, when you take care, the buildings become green and become environmentally friendly. So that's a start to give you an idea of how much can be done, how much is being done, and uh, we're doing a lot. That's very interesting. So I will, of course, follow up on that. But as a consumer, tell me honestly, if somebody is looking at a sustainable or a green building, will they have to pay more than what they are paying right now? Yes, you pay a little more, but actually it's cheaper. So I'll give you an example. Uh, it's like quality. If you get a quality product, the sustainability of the product is longer. So if you have a green building, which is energy effective, you recover the cost of that extra cost which you bear within five years or six years. So you're spending, say, 5 to 10% more. But in five years, in energy bills itself, you will save that money. 
So in reality, what happens is that it appears to be costly in, in the initial stages, but it's not. It really becomes cheaper. It's like a quality building. You make a bad quality building, it starts crumbling after 20 years or leakage after 20 years. If you make a good quality building like we do and good mm -hmm. construction companies do, uh, they don't leak, one. And second, uh, also they are sustainable. So when we've tried to, somebody wanted to do rebuild development of one hour old building, they said, my God, it's so difficult to even break down your buildings <laughs> because they are so sturdy and strong. So uh, yes, what you're asking, Sona, is right. There, It is a little more expensive in the initial stages, but you recover the cost in three, four, five years. And the sustainability of such structures is fantastic. So you you don't mind paying that 5%, 10% more, really. Okay, so uh, are people buying or looking for sustainable homes? Are you seeing that demand? If we talk about, if we map a percentage of homes sold in last one year, how much of it would be as a demand for sustainable homes? Any number do we have there? So you'll be surprised. It's a, The whole attitude has changed. People want green buildings. They want sustainable buildings. And uh, uh, earlier it was only the commercial buildings that mm. uh, companies wanted green buildings to come in and where they wanted green rated buildings also. Mm. So we have uh, platinum rated buildings in Pawai, which, has, which is the highest lead rating in the world uh, in two of our buildings in Pawai. Mm. So, uh, and this is 20, uh, close to 20 years it's ago. Old, yeah. So we did that much before it became very popular, you know, amongst uh, <laughs> media and others to talk about it. You know, earlier those days, nobody talked about it. We still had platinum rated buildings. But having said that, the commercial side is much more agile and active. Mm. And the boards are more interested in the green buildings, rated buildings, rather than on the residential side, where I think the consumer is still not aware about the fact that they should be more happy in order to get green buildings. Okay. Uh, you use the word lead rated or lead rating. What does that mean for builders? Because whenever you said, whenever you go to some commercial properties, they'll say we are the only lead rated or we are one of the lead rated companies in the country. So what does that mean? So it means that there are certifications which are there. There are three or four certifications. Amongst them, Leeds is one of them. And uh, Graha is the other ones. And others rated uh, uh, rating companies are there, which are entitled to certify these buildings as green. And they get different uh, things, platinum, gold, green, uh, silver, and others, depending on the extent to which you have actually worked towards uh, getting your building rated. So if you're doing, let's say, even when you excavate the earth and the way you dispose of that earth is equally important to get the highest rating. Oh. Or let's say, for instance, when you're making a building and if it is A, B, C, D, E, you have taken care of, it will be a gold rating. But if you don't do A, B, C, D, E, but you do A, B, C, it will be silver rating. So different ratings are come into the picture. But the very fact that it is rated mm -hmm. itself is a very positive things and if you've got a proper certification to do it i think it's very good and the country should move towards that direction uh, being the highest rated is uh, good for us and companies which deal with uh, those clients who are very very conscious and are willing to pay a little more for that but if but everyone must be now green rated uh, build it should become rated and all these buildings and i'm sure that sooner or later the government will mandate that every builder should make every building including government buildings which are green buildings so right now there's no regulation as such to have no there is no mandate okay. but uh, the rating is there and slowly but surely as uh, more and more companies do it it's happening and even governments have started uh, getting their buildings rated and designing the buildings to get it rated. So very positive okay. direction. That That's good to know. So in that case, apart from getting quality customers or um, more customers, if your buildings are rated, are there any other financial benefits that somebody, if the building is rated a certain way, would get loans or finance at lower cost or would get green credit or would get any tax exemptions? So there was a proposal for tax exemption, which unfortunately has not gone through, though it was approved, okay. but they have not yet given it to the buildings. So we haven't got that benefit from the corporation in spite of the fact that it was approved at some point of time. But having said that, I think uh, 
it's uh, the benefits which uh, government has to incentivize this in order to trigger it happening more across the board. So I think that will definitely make a world of a difference in order to encourage more developers to do so. As far as the government is concerned, they should just simply mandate 100% of their buildings should be green rated, matter should be over. I don't think uh, it's a big problem. And maybe the quality of the buildings will also improve because when you're doing a green rated building, there's more attention to the detail and quality. So automatically, probably the quality of the buildings of government also will become better. That is good to know. But uh, how would you rate it in that case? I'm, I just wanted to understand, since you've been in the industry for so long, are you actually seeing builders make that conscious effort? Um, or is it more about advertisements right now? Because we do see these hoardings where it's carbon neutral, it's great, you know, for your living and stuff like that. But is that actually happening in the industry? Barring few of them, of course. I think it is happening. Uh, as... Uh, competition increases as more and more de good developers have come into the marketplace and they are not only advertising but actually doing it on the ground. Mm -hmm. I think people are recognizing what has happened. Mm -hmm. As they get educated, like this podcast that you mm -hmm. have done, uh, I think uh, more people will demand it. Mm -hmm. And why not? Mm -hmm. Because if they're getting uh, environmentally better buildings and they're paying a fortune for it, so there's no reason why they can't demand it. And for maybe 3 4 5% more cost, I don't think that really makes such a lot of difference. Yes, in the affordable segment, people are challenged. Mm -hmm. uh, even if it's 5% more cost, they feel uh, that it's not worth it. But I think there, the mandate of government would be necessary for us to make quality buildings, uh, and they're already doing it under RERA. Mm -hmm. So uh, why not also green buildings could be mandated over a period of time? I think in the next couple of years, it will become a mandate. But, uh, you know, early government is also experimenting. They themselves are not doing it yet. So I think they take a little time, but it will happen. Okay, so more power to everyone who's doing that and working in this direction. But in that case, if you were, this is always a debate, should I rent a house, should I buy a house? But in this case, somebody who's looking at a sustainable house, should they wait right now because this segment is still developing and is growing? Or do you think they should go ahead and buy a house? I always say that you must buy a house today, not tomorrow, if you can afford it. Uh, the reason is over a period of time with inflation being what it is, even though it's five, five and a half percent, your cost of house is going to grow and go up. Uh, number two, the tax benefits that you get in terms of buying a house, as well as loans that are available to younger people who want to buy a house, I think I would be encouraged if I was their age to actually immediately go and buy a house, even if it's a small house, mm -hmm. and later on maybe grow to a bigger house. Because what is happening is that uh, to be able to create and set aside money for a house or get loans for the purposes of buying a house in a later date may not be equally uh, possible. Mm -hmm. So at a younger age, it's better to buy a house and then look at the incremental advantages of it. Even if you're not staying there and if you're staying in another city, you could rent it out uh, for the meantime till you come back to the city where you have bought your house and you want to retire or stay there. But my view is that uh, in a country like India, there's no social security. Mm -hmm. So having a house of your own is much, much more needed than any other country of the world where there is social security. Mm -hmm. So Rec highly recommended for young people to buy houses and banks and financial institutions are giving uh, loans left, right and center, mm -hmm. long term loans, 10 years, 15 years, 20 year loans for youngsters to buy houses. OK, so let me get a little micro because the city that we are staying in has high rocket, skyrocket uh, uh, home prices and we've seen construction all around. Anything that you would suggest the BMC, the government should do to ensure that more real estate players are ensuring green construction rather than the rampant construction that we are seeing right so now? There's already a policy in place which is not being implemented, mm. which is actually to give a concession for green buildings which have been constructed in terms of the tax relief that they will get. Okay. So those have, can be just implemented and I think uh, that more and more people will do green buildings from a government perspective, I think that's the most important thing. You were talking about expensive buildings and it's not becoming affordable. Just to share with you, Sona, 
about 50 to 55 percent of the cost of your house, any house you buy in Mumbai, is government taxes. So it is government taxes at the time when you buy land, when you do development, when you take permissions, when you, you do fire assessment, uh, you pay a develop additional FSI charge, uh, you know, and uh, these are all payments made to the government and municipal corporation and other authorities. And, and the ready reckoning rate being so high, you can't sell at a lower rate. Mm. So all in all, what has happened is government has actually caused the inflation and made homes in Mumbai unaffordable. Mm. During COVID, they had uh, relaxed some of these development charges by 50%, which actually slightly brought down the prices. But uh, again, they're back again and uh, we have a huge cost. So I think some of this government, government feels that uh, uh, real estate is the best place where they can raise revenues and seek the taxes so the central government with GST, uh, state governments with stamp duties, the local authorities with their duties and charges and other charges. So I think government will really have to look at it if they want to make affordable housing through the private sector. Government can do it through its own sector because then they don't pay the taxes. And uh, that's why other agencies like MADA and others can provide these houses. Mm -hmm. But the private sector just can't make lower cost houses as far as places like cities like Mumbai and others where cost of land, cost of development and other costs are just exorbitant. I mean, uh, can you imagine you, you pay 50 lakhs for a house, more than 25, 27 lakhs of rupees is actually taken away by the government directly or indirectly yeah. in various taxes. So that's it. That's huge. That's that's a big amount that we are paying away as taxes. So, you know, you also mentioned there's already a policy in place. It's not being implemented with tax in incentives. Can you elaborate a little more on that? Because yeah, nothing to be elaborated. It's a question is that if you get a green building rated and approved, you should pay m less municipal taxes, which will actually go to the persons who's buying the house. So even if he's paying 5%, 10% more at the buying of the house, he will compensate it by lower tax rates, which would happen. But All they've nowhere. Got so basically, the, it's not implemented. It's, uh, no, it's not implemented yet. And uh, hopefully, if that gets implemented, you will see more and more uh, incentivization to developers, to the buyers also to demand what uh, that it should be green. You know, building. You know exactly why we're having this conversation. If somebody who's looking at buying a green building should know that, yes, there is some incentive available. I can actually tell my builder or the municipality that please give it to me in any form that you can. Uh, so that's very important to know as well. Sure. Um, Something new in terms of technology that you're seeing in the real estate space, something new in terms of sustainable practices that you should, th you think are in everyone's mind but is not implemented or is just at the start of implementation? I think most of the things have already started. So let's look at, uh, uh, let's look at tree plantation. Hmm. Uh, all us developers have been doing that. So for example, we have 250 acres in Pawai where... Uh, when I bought the land, it was quarry land with 20 trees in 250 acres. Now we have more than 4 lakh trees, which are more than 40 feet tall. And 25% of the land is uh, forested and gardened. Similarly, other developers have also done that, plantations which have taken place. And the government itself have been doing it. There are three revenue lands which I've taken from the government and forest department, which we have forested. 20, uh, 25 acres in, in uh, uh, Vikroli. I've taken 20-25 acres in uh, near Kandala. I've taken another now in Alibag where we just planted 5,000 trees this year. So, you know, private developers, uh, government sector actually doing plantation, corporates doing plantation work in terms of afforestation. I think it's a multiple effort. And of course, Sadhguru has been, uh, you know, also uh, propagating and working towards that direction. So I think it is happening. Mm. May not be as fast, as quick, and uh, as much as we would like it. Mm. But I think it started. So I think the ball is rolling. Mm. And, you know, having programs like this really adds uh, to all that mm. and is helpful mm. because it uh, encourages people, makes them think about it. You voice it, you say it again and again. It's like reading the Gita. No, Gita, it's there and you can read it once, but you constantly look at it. So I think repeating the sus uh, subject of sustainability, environmental clearance, solid waste management, water, uh, sustainability constructions of what it is, 
uh, using bulbs which have uh, 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 you know which uh, consume less energy and stuff like that so all in all we need to do all this activity it's not just one mm. you know people say electrical vehicles you know i mean we need to move to it fast i think in the next 5 to 7 years i'm sure uh, i think by the end of uh, mr modi's next tenure i'm sure he's going to say no more petrol cars you know <laughs> period finish everybody now switch over to the whole thing you know it's about time because we can't afford the pollution so i think we are going to see all that railway lines are getting electrified uh, metro more people will travel hopefully less by cars and then stuff like that all in all we are moving right and i think the you know i think the builders are also doing their little bit some not so bit not so good uh, but many are good also yeah. so let's do more collaborations to instead of the competition phase that we could be in so it, so as to ensure there are greener buildings mr hiranandani it was a pleasure having you with us on the podcast today thank you for explaining us the nuances of what green buildings are like what goes on into builders mind and that the consumers will not have to pay a lot more for these buildings some amount yes but that would not impact them so much in the longer run it was a pleasure speaking with you today so my pleasure to speak to you about this subject because i'm glad that this is being used and broadcast so that people know and understand sustainability in a much more detailed manner so wonderful program thank you thank you so much there's no planet b right so we need to keep working towards saving it every day with that we'll take your leave on this edition of the climate clock podcast stay tuned for more news and updates